Ah, hi everyone. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, they're having a cow auction here, but actually I want to show you guys some vehicles coming up in the next auction here on uh, August 16th. Um, there's some really cool stuff, like for example, well, um, let's get into it. I also, I should say, actually before I get into that, uh, welcome back to Kennedy's Garage. My name is Kennedy Lloyd and, you know, you're watching uh, my channel. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm a big automotive enthusiast and I daily, well, that Mustang over there. So, anyways, let's get into um, some of the vehicles. So, here, for example, we have, I'm not sure what year this is. I'll have to look at the, the info. Okay, it's a 74. 74 Ford Galaxy 500. And actually, if you look down the side of it, it's really not too bad. I mean, it's got some dings and a little bit of rust here and there and whatever else, but really not too bad. Um, now, it's funny that they say the rear bumper has fallen off, but actually, if you look, it has rusted off, right? Which is pretty common on these, to be honest. Um, you know, that was the thing. And actually, now, something that's kind of cool that dates this, because you can see that sticker there, right? Which is pretty cool. It looks like it's been on there for quite a long time, and it's definitely faded and stuff, and it's pretty cool to see something like that. Um, I can't really get down this side, obviously, because there's this tracker in the way. But, um, well, let's see. Is it unlocked? I think it is, actually. No, this one is locked. Sometimes I leave them unlocked, other times they're locked, but... Uh, this thing's very, very cool. You can see the original Alberta plate in there. Very nice. And you can read all the info there if you want to. If you guys want to check this one out, um, you know this one has a 351 Windsor in it with 82,000 miles at least on the odometer. But uh, you know they got this as a project and just looks like they didn't go through with it. But um, I want to show you guys what's down this way but actually i'm going to pop. well unfortunately they have the all right there we go so okay so you can see some of the vehicles back here i'm not too interested in this stuff right but i'll just show you guys there's a ford escape there big old super duty there's only a couple of vehicles i'm interested in really a yeah, nice f-350 that probably has a six liter in it or actually that would be a little newer it might be the six three or whatever the hell it is um here we have another Ford F-250 Super Duty. Actually, this would be in pretty good shape overall. Same as that great one there. And we have a Dodge Avenger, but then the one that I'm more interested in a little bit is this Ford Mustang. Now, this Mustang, um, I haven't actually seen this one yet. It's not in that bad of shape, although it does something key to it. That's sad. Um, you know, it's got the nice, uh, Nice wheels, I love those Mustang wheels. Um, and it is a manual inside. You might not be able to see that. There, see it's a manual right there. Right? Super cool. Uh, I don't remember how many how many miles this one has, but it's not in that bad of shape overall. Like it's got some rust forming right there. But overall, like and these would have, because this is a GT, so this would have the 4.6 liter V8. They made about 300 horsepower at the time. And you know, they were actually, um pretty good motor i mean that's the same motor that was in the crown vix that just went forever and yeah unfortunately i had to jump the fence to get in here because it's all locked up and not sure why but uh you know nice uh the seats are all nice and everything and it has the, the mustang branding in it and everything you know these are a very nice cars got some dings and scratches and stuff like that windshields cracked but overall this is not too bad this is not bad at all um over here, actually something that's closer to what I know, this is a Grand Cherokee Laredo, which these would have, well, this could have the 5.2 V8, this could have the four liter um, inline six as well. And not sure what's in this one, but it's got the usual, hey, 90s paint job, you know, with the peeled paint and everything. Um, inside you'll see, you know, Nice uh, automatic shifter, and the interior is actually not in a bad shape either. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, not bad at all, actually. 
But again, I don't know any information on this. This stuff, I'll leave a link in the description below of the, all the, uh, to the, this auction itself. So, yeah. Um, here we have a 95 Mustang GT. So this has the 5 liter and the, um, a 5 speed manual in it. But I'm not a big fan of the, these taillights they put in it, but they did put a Cobra R, um, style kit on it, which, uh, I'm not sure if I like it or not. I prefer this, these bumpers on a, um, on the New Edge Mustangs. This is the SF95, which it's basically just a modified Fox body, right? So I know quite a bit about these. Um, you know, you got the, uh, the pony wheels down there. And you can see, unfortunately, this paint is really bad. Like, um... You know, that's the biggest spot. And there's a couple of hail dents and stuff like that. It definitely is a beater, but you can take a look inside. It's not leather, but it does have a five speed in it. And it is a five liter. These are actually a really hard car to find. Because you can see a nice Mustang GT. Right? I wish I had the keys for this one. But uh, they're ha they have an auction with the cows. So I'm not going to bother them too, too much. But you know, and it's got this awesome, I love this Cobra R front lip though. And, you know, the headlights could use some restoration, but not too bad. And it's got this nice, I think this is a Cervini hood on it as well. It looks really good, honestly. I do like this a lot. And who knows? If this goes cheap enough, I might be a player on this when it comes up for sale. Um, over here, we have something interesting, which you guys may never have seen one of these. Now, this is a Renault. or It's actually... Um, these they were called the amc renault alliance or renault amc alliance they were sold through amc dealers in uh the us and canada in the 80s now this is i want to say it was an 84. um renault actually bought amc and so they had to you know sell some renault vehicles and this was one of them right now this one actually body wise it's in pretty decent mix for the most part it's got some rust on it but not too too bad um the top though is just it's done and where would you find a top for this i don't know i really don't know but um yeah very very cool these had a little four cylinder in them they weren't fast by any means they were just a little economy car back in their day and, you know like and you can tell people started to piece this one this top together because you see all the the wood that's holding on the top together. It's pretty funny, actually, that way. Um, and yeah, like you'd probably have to get that custom made a new top, I think, which would cost you a lot of money. And also something else, it does not have the uh, the cylinder for the trunk for the lock cylinder. So keep that in mind too. If you're ever looking at a car at auction, do look for little details like that because that's stuff that you might not think about and it can bite you in the end. Um, this is probably locked, right? Oh, it's unlocked. Check this out. I've never seen the inside of one of these. It is so cool. Now, it does have, you know, tore up seats a little bit. And I doubt this is leather. It's probably um, vinyl. You can see all the HVAC controls, which are pretty interesting. It's really cool, actually. And it reads 149,000 kilometers on it. So, yeah. It's honestly very cool. I do like it, but I'm probably not a player on this one. I know this one needs a bunch of work too, but still very, very cool to see one of these. Cause again, I haven't seen one in person. Um, you know, there's not really much else interesting down here. Although, ah, there's a truck I want to check out, which I'll show you guys that in a moment. But, um, you know, I just dig the color on this, uh, Dodge Dart Rally. It's honestly pretty cool. It, this like electric sort of yellow color with the black stripe. It looks damn good. Big fan. Big fan. I like the wheels too. Although they are have a bit of a curb rash and stuff like that. But these are kind of a cool car. And this has the automatic in it. Okay. But the thing is with these cars, um, if you don't know, these are a a stretched Alfa Romeo, if I remember correctly. Um and so you do have to watch out for some reliability aspect of these. Like, see, and this guy has the, like I said, 
the multi air turbo which is the um they call that the tiger shark they made about 240 ish horsepower from a 2.4 wasn't that bad um not a super fast car but it'll get you moving pretty good the manuals did have a problem though to where they would rip out the uh uh the forks um for the shifter it would rip them out if you weren't uh, careful um let's just see yeah it's a rally edition okay so sorry this has a 1.4 that's right, it was the... I can't remember what the other edition was that had a 2.4 turbo. So this isn't the Tiger Shark. You have 5-speed automatic. And yeah, it's got some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, and it's actually a pretty good nick overall. Windshield's cracked, but welcome to Alberta. Just about every windshield is cracked. And it's nice. You know, there, there's a decent little four-door cobalt, but honestly... You guys know I'm not really that interested in those at all. Now, all right, now that we're over here, sorry, I'm just pausing and starting the footage a bunch. Here we have the last generation Dakota, which these could either have the 3.7 or the 4.7 liter V8. 3.7 was a V6. Um, they weren't super amazing engines, but I mean, they did last. They just gave you some more troubles than as opposed to the 3.9s and the 5.2s, which due to uh, oiling issues, um, 3.7 especially was the worst for that and the 2.7. 4.7 wasn't quite as bad, but if you kept up on the oil changes, it wasn't so bad because, but you had to keep up the maintenance on these. Otherwise, the motors would get oil sledging and it was very, very bad very easily because the oil journals are not large enough. And yeah, the oil would just start to sludge. So it's very unfortunate. Because I do like these, honestly. They are kind of cool. They're not my favorite generation of Dakota. Like, you get an early first gen for me, and I'm just all over that. Um, yeah, no, it's locked. Because again, some things are locked, some things are not. But you know, it's not too, too bad. It's dirty. But not too, too bad. Don't know what kind of mileage this one has. I'm sure it's over 300,000 kilometers on it, but... Decent, decent little beater truck. Um, if we move along here, here's something cool, and actually something that would be right up uh, Teen Mechanics Garage, which if you want to go check out his channel, he can. He bought a uh, DeVille, a 2005 DeVille. It's like one of the final years with the North Star in it. This one's a little earlier. I can't remember what year this one is 100%, but it is... Uh, it looks to be in a little worse shape, and it's been sitting for a lot longer than his did. Um, these had the North Star V8s, which were notorious for their head gaskets blowing. Um, it wasn't if, it was when. And to fix it, it cost more than the car is worth. Because these things, mint condition, are like maybe three grand. And to do the head gaskets, it's like four grand. <laughs> so, because you have to pull the motor out, actually, to do that. So, okay, this is an STS. That's what this one is. I couldn't remember for sure. But, you know, it's not... I mean, it's got a bunch of discoloration. Like, you can tell a little bit down there. And the doors are have a bunch of discoloration compared to the rest of the body. You can tell, right? Um, this is more of a manila. This is more of a white. And that's just what happens over time when stuff is exposed to the sun and not properly cleaned all the time and also buffed out. Like, this might be able to buff out. Maybe. You know, I definitely need some headlight restoration too, which most cars do. People just don't want to do it. And, uh, yeah. Now, is this an SS? Let's go read the thing. Because if this is an SS, this would be kind of cool. It is an SS. Okay. So this is an um, 06 Cobalt SS. Now, these are the kind of the fun one. They had a supercharged um, four-cylinder motor that made about 240, 250-ish horsepower. These moved quite decently, and actually, you could build these and make an absolute monster out of it. Actually, this one's unlocked. Oh. Okay, it looks like it's unlocked, but it's actually not. You can see it there, right? Yeah, it's not actually unlocked. Okay. That's deceiving. But, um, hey, they went to Peter's at one point. Yeah, you can see the stick shift in it. You know, these are a very fun car. Um, Moved quite good. And, yeah, I'm a fan of these a little bit. Of the SS is a little, to be honest... If this is a Saturn, it'd be way cooler. Because um, Saturn made their own version of this called the Ion Redline. And they had the same motors in them. 
Um, they only made those up until I think it was 2005. These went until 2010 or 2011, I think. I could be wrong on the years. But, um, yeah. Cool beater. You know, and fast beater, too. And it's only got 195,000 kilometers on it. Instead, it has a new clutch in it. So, you know, who knows? Is that clutch cheap enough? I might be interested. Um, here we have something near and dear to my heart. Now, I thought this was in better shape than this, but I guess not. But that's okay. This might actually be within my price range. If this is the one I'm thinking of. Because this is a 1988 or 89, I believe, Dodge D150 Ram. And oh yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's got a nice crunch there. Um, these are a very simple truck. My dad actually owned an 81 with a slant 6. This one, I believe, has a 318 in it. Yeah, this is the one that uh right here this is the one i was thinking of it was an 86 sorry 318 d150 royal you know got a bunch of uh parts in it it is locked i'd love to hear this one run but i'm sure it runs it's no 318 they run all the time this one's apparently registered and everything um and actually what's really cool on these is you know the big old ram horns that they put in the uh, mid 80s i absolutely love that hood ornament People try and steal them all the time, and it's sad. But not worth anything, but they're just cool. Right? I'm a big fan of these trucks. And it's actually got a plastic bed liner, which I'd be curious to see what's underneath the plastic bed liner, if it's all um, metal or not. Like, if it's... What I, mean, what I mean by that is if it's rusty. So, actually, this could be within my budget. Because I thought this was in a lot better shape. The pictures are deceiving online. This is why you always come look at a vehicle. Uh, when you see pictures online, always, always, always take a look. Okay, and the... Yep, and the tailgate's stuck. So, there's that issue too. But, that shouldn't be a very hard fix. It, I, I think it just needs some... A uh, little bit WD-40 or... Look at wrench, right? Um, if we take a look inside... Which this actually has the tow mirrors on it too. So let's take a look inside. And okay, it's got a torn seat. Um, the dash is nice, not cracked or anything. And yeah, so I might be a player on this if it goes cheap enough. I don't know if it will, but we'll see. Ah. Over here, we have a Ford F-350 that was a... I'm assuming this is an airport lavatory um, waste truck. Then honestly, it is kind of cool to see these. Um, this would have... Oh, God, what motors would these even have? Probably a 460. Um, I don't know if... Did they put the 7.2s in these? Diesel? I'm not sure. Honestly... My Fords from this period of the trucks, I'm not as familiar with. Especially the three-quarter tons. Like, the, the half tons, I know. But this is a three-quarter ton. Or, actually, sorry, this is a one ton. One ton, yeah. Um, actually, this looks to be unlocked. Yes, it is. So, now, what's interesting about this one is, okay. You know, you got these this tannish brown with black. And then the shifter is here. Because it should be up in the column there. But it's not. They moved it to down here. Which is an interesting thing. And actually, this shows how many hours that this thing ran for. Which is... It shows 26.1791. So, you know, pretty cool. And actually, there's a... Why is there a zip tie? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, this is kind of cool, actually. And actually, it's a fairly solid truck. Just from closing the door there. Now, nobody would want this part of it. Anybody that buys it is probably going to rip this off and just have a nice truck overall. But who knows? I could be wrong. Um, yeah, these are pretty cool. Next up, we have an OBS GMC or Chevy. Chevy. 3500 Dually Z71 off-road package that is an extended cab. Um, I want to say that's a long box. That could be a short box. Um, that this has the... 6.5 diesel in it with a turbo, right? So these are uh, kind of interesting. Although, again, this is one of these vehicles where you have to watch out for. Because 
Look at how dry rotted those tires are. Those are not going to last very long going down the highway or anything like that. So uh, if you're going to auction, keep in mind of stuff like that. And this one is locked, okay? This one, oh, it does have a five speed in it. You can see the stick there, right? It's hard for me to get you guys a good look because I don't have the keys. And they're doing an auction inside, so I'm not going to ask them for keys. So, but um, yeah, this is uh, pretty cool. Honestly, it's, if somebody needed a work truck, well, here it is, right? Great, great, great work truck. Now, this is interesting back here. Um, you know, and something, <laughs> you never see these stickers anymore. Um, the tagline for Chevrolet back in the day was the heartbeat of America, right? So you don't see that anymore, and it's kind of cool to see it. Um, but yeah, overall, nice truck. Not too bad. A little rusty. I'm sure it's there might be some rust underneath, but um, yeah, very cool. Um, and this, okay, so it has its, those headlights. So this is the, uh, what year would this be? Early 90s? Just like the one beside it, which I did buy one of these fairly recently. Um, about Actually, it was about a month, month and a half ago. I bought one of these at this auction and it was really cheap that's why i bought it and this one oh this one has buckets in it that's kind of rare and the bucket see it it's an automatic uh it's reading 275,000 kilometers on it that's not too bad this could be a good truck for somebody you know very very nice uh box is rusty of course like this is a beater truck definitely but you know um, you can see some of the stickers on it. You know, they were fans of the San Francisco 49ers and stuff like that. But, it's pretty cool. Uh, the OVSs, they started in 1988, and they went until 1997, right? That was the final year of the OBS Chevy slash GMC. And, uh, yeah, and when they say OBS, it's this body style, right? And OBS stands for old body style when it comes to these trucks. Um, you know, because before this, it was the square body Chevys that, uh, went from, uh, um, 73 till 87. So, yeah. Now, these are kind of cool. So, here is a jacked up, uh, Tundra with a 5.7 in it. These are cool, honestly. I do like the Tundras. They're one of my favorite modern trucks, to be honest. Um... You know, they've got the 5.7 uh, E-Force or I-Force, depending on the year. I love these 07 to 20, I think there was 15, where they had this front end and the taillight combination that this has as well. Um, it's got these really nice Eagle wheels. You know, they look pretty good. Um, and yeah, now, this is interesting. It has the SR5 package, but the SR5 package started in the 70s, and actually what that meant was a 5-speed manual. That got lost in the 80s, because um, a 5-speed manual back in the 70s was actually a very rare sort of thing to see, and most vehicles had 4-speed manuals, so that's pretty cool. You know, here we have a GMC Sierra Nevada edition, which I don't really know much on the Nevadas. Um, they are... Uh, like, I know this is more of an upscale version, and it has the Z71 off-road package, so this would be a 4x4. Um, and yeah, and actually one of the tires are flat, so again, one of the reasons why you should always take a look at a vehicle at auction before you come by it. But, uh, yeah, and I don't know what the mileage is, because it's a digital speedometer, but... Looks to be pretty decent in there. Got some options. It does not have leather seats. There are... But it's interesting. They have a, a thing at the top that says limited edition GFX. Right? So that's pretty cool. Honestly, I, I, I do dig it. Um, here's another OBS Chevy. But this one doesn't look to be too, too bad either. I mean, depending on the mileage and what the motor is and stuff like that. Because a lot of these have 305s, but if you get one with a 350, they were much nicer. You know, 305s, 
they're not a bad engine or anything but uh yeah unfortunately this one's got really rusty uh, cab wires so you do have to be aware of that um you know but actually the box okay i'm sure it's probably rusty underneath this especially with this carpet oh god that's a terrible you never ever put carpet in a box because it just it absorbs moisture and it totally ruins it um so yeah but who knows again okay this came from calgary because that's a cj92 sticker so yeah and it came from shaganapi dodge or shaganapi chevrolet so yeah again this might be a vehicle that i'm interested in it's a chevy cheyenne 1500 you know and again both cab corners are pretty ruined but the rest of the truck is actually not bad like the box is decent it's a short box that doesn't really have any rust i mean i'm sure there might be rust underneath the chrome trim but uh and again another one with buckets wow i keep finding these with buckets usually i see these with the uh the bench so that's kind of interesting um and they had an option for a low like a, without a headrest and with a headrest um in the 80s and into the early 90s i think in the mid 90s they had to go to a proper headrest